do so now. You will live forever. Just eat your vegetables. <laughs> what? Pigs? Jake? Hello? Are you here? You seemed totally zoned out. Oh, sorry. It was a flashback of a dream I had last night after watching a documentary on Netflix just before I went to bed. What documentary? Live to 100. It's based on the books that popularized the so-called Blue Zone regions. Where a bunch of centenarians live? The land of immortals brought to you by sly marketing and creative storytelling. So, what got my attention is that they talk a lot about the traditional diet of these longevity regions. Let me guess. Plants are good, meat is bad. Something along those lines. Though, if I had to choose one particular food that helps to live to be 100, it would be cherries. At least this is what they pick the most in the series. There's a strong plant-based agenda attached to the idea of blue zones. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure, the people living in places like Okinawa, the islands in South Japan, eat a lot more plants than Joe Sixpack on a 4th of July barbecue party, but they make it look like their traditional diet is straight from the Garden of Eden. They certainly do. I wonder how they would explain that Okinawa is called the Island of Pork. Maybe they count pigs as vegetables? I know, right? And we're talking about islands. How come they eat so little seafood? I have a feeling they're not telling us the whole story. And they do it on purpose. I know what you mean. I've yet to see a plant-based production where deception wouldn't be the default, but perhaps this one is an exception. That would be a first. Well, we better look into it then. We're Ryan Investigates, after all. Do you think people will listen to a cartoon horse? Why not? If they prefer facts to fiction. So, Jake, where should we start the investigation of the traditional Okinawan diet? I know where we shouldn't start. If you walk around the center of the big cities on the island, you can see signs that the Okinawan Blue Zone might soon be a thing of the past. The westernized junk food culture has clearly taken its toll, and compared to older generations, younger people now eat less whole foods, more sugar, white flour, oils, and processed meat like Spam. They're basically replicating the standard American diet. Overall, there has been a big increase in the calories consumed, and as a result, they are more obese and less healthy. This, combined with the lack of exercise, sedentary lifestyle, and heavy drinking resulted that in two generations, Okinawans have gone from the lowest BMI to the highest BMI among the Japanese population. What about saturated fat, the dreaded villain of dietary fats? It increased, though it's not as bad as the fear-mongering vegan propaganda wants you to believe. Okinawan longevity is now a thing of the past. Okinawa now hosts more than a dozen KFCs. The saturated fat tripled. Oh no, tripled? Scam. Sounds really scary, doesn't it? But if you put it into context, and don't crop out half of the table as Dr. Greger did, a very dishonest move, by the way, you can see that it's still lower than the saturated fat intake of Mediterranean diet. You know, the diet of two other blue zones. And it's lower than 10%, which is what the dietary guidelines for Americans recommend as the upper limit. Where do you think most of the increased fat consumption comes from? Bingo. Your saturated fat triple, 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 triple. 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 Don't worry about him. He's a zealot, not a real scientist. Yeah. Dude's a vegan grifter. He built his whole career on demonizing meat-eating any possible way. That said, he got one thing right. Okinawa does have many KFCs. You know what else Okinawa hosts? More than a dozen Mr. Donuts, and a lot more than a dozen candy shops. Hundreds of pizza places, cafes selling waffles, cupcakes, sweet pies, bakeries with deep-fried sugary pastry and so on. You can buy salty, fatty snacks at every corner, but it must be the meat. As if meat was the only thing sold in fast food restaurants. Sure, there is chicken in KFC and beef in McDonald's, but again, why single out meat? 
Why not the burger buns, french fries, the cooking oils used over and over again, the huge spike in salt intake, the large amounts of refined carbs, added sugars, high fructose corn syrup, preservatives, and a thousand different kinds of ultra-processed foods? They even turn the so-called Okinawan superfoods like Goya, the bitter melon into ice cream or sweet potatoes into desserts. What's next? Slush puppies from pig ears? I think we can all agree that eating a high-fat, high-carb diet full of hyper-palatable, highly addictive, ultra-processed foods is a recipe for metabolic disaster. Exactly. I know many steak lovers in perfect shape and some very unhealthy junk food vegans. Conclusion? Just stick to Whole Foods. I don't think centenarians go to KFC or Pizza Hut very often, so I was wondering, what is the traditional Okinawan cuisine known for? According to the official tour guide of the Okinawan prefecture, their cuisine centers around pork. Which is obviously a vegetable. Obviously. On a more serious note, they do indeed eat a lot of vegetables. Shallots, papaya, taro, goya, daikon, chameso, or the algae called sea grapes are all popular ingredients. But perhaps the most well-known food item is the purple sweet potato. You can read thousands of articles written about the health benefits of this ubiquitous vegetable, as if this was the magic secret behind the longevity phenomenon in Okinawa. But what they don't tell you is that the times when people ate this vegetable on a daily basis ended more than 60 years ago. As you can see, by 1965, sweet potato consumption fell drastically to almost zero. Oops. Then what's the obsession with sweet potatoes? Welcome to the world of half-truths, Mandy. There are many more traditional foods that are never mentioned in the Blue Zones media. For example, if you asked Okinawan children if they preferred McDonald's over their grandmother's rafta, sadly, the majority would choose eating in the American fast food chain. Of course, it's not the Big Mac that is traditional. What's the food called again? Rafte, or braised pork belly, which is also known in Hawaii as it was introduced by Okinawan immigrants in the early 1900s, but we have to mention soki soba, tender pork ribs and fish cake on top of noodles in pork broth, and mimigar, shredded pig ears. These are all big favorites among the locals. Welcome to Okinawa, the island of beaches, sunshine, and good pork. Next up on this Okinawan food tour of Naha, we actually drove a little bit outside of the city. We're north of the city, a place called Uraso. And let me tell you, we could not have an Okinawan food tour without eating this dish. It seems like literally the entire population of Okinawa just at 11 a.m. just drops whatever they're doing and goes to eat this one dish for lunch. It's extremely popular. The menu, as with most good places, is extremely small. They just have a few different things you can order, including the different pork parts and then the yushi tofu soba. So this one is the soki soba, and soki, I believe, is the ribs. Oh, we have to just taste that, that broth first. Oh, that's on another level. It's so clean. Porky, but not oily. Let me try that rib real fast before moving on to the next. Oh, wow. That's the most tender rib meat you'll ever have. It just completely falls off the bone. Okinawan food is also known to be extremely nutritious. It's a blue zone of the world where many people live to be over 100 years old, traditionally. And that has to do especially with the diet and the air and the atmosphere, I think. You notice there's a lot of fermentation, a lot of miso, a lot of vegetables, tofu, yeah. Surprisingly, there's also a lot of pork. So this is another traditional dish. Pig ears boiled, how are they prepared, and then shredded. It almost looks like lemongrass. Oh, let's try this. Oh, there's cabbage on the bottom too. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. That's the most refreshing pig ears I've ever had in my life. So next one is a very traditional Okinawan dish, rafte. Rafte is a stewed pork belly. It's beautiful. It's uh, simmered with, hmm, is it soy sauce? Mmm. Mmm. Melting in my mouth. And it has good, good pork flavor. Look at that. Doesn't that look divine? Oh my god, it smells so good. I don't know why pork tastes so good in Okinawa. It has so much flavor. If this is what a plant-based paradise looks like, count me in. Me too. Who needs KFC when you have beautiful, succulent pork with fresh vegetables? Or if you're a little more adventurous, you must try goat soup. 
Today you will only find it in old school, traditional restaurants, but before the war there were more than 100,000 goats in Okinawa. Nearly every family raised pigs and goats. Goats? Another traditional blue zone vegetable, I suppose. Well, goats eat plants, so we might as well call them plant-based. Oh, I almost forgot. There was a dietary survey made in 2002 asking different age groups the following question. What do you recall as Okinawan traditional dishes? Guess what was the most frequent answer among elderly people? Miso soup. Pig trotters. Hello! Welcome to Miki's Kitchen! Today is the 385th day. I'm going to show you how to make tebichi. Tebichi is a popular dish in Okinawa. It simmers potatoes or pig slaughters. Few Japanese people outside Okinawa eat pig's feet. But Okinawans have a peculiar culture of eating every part of the pig thoroughly. Many also recalled nakami, a soup made from pig guts as a traditional dish. Goya, a very bitter vegetable, was also on the list. It's usually eaten as a stir-fry with tofu, eggs, and small pieces of meat or fish. Or in the form of longevity ice cream. Who doesn't love a bit of bitter ice cream? Anyway, this dish, Goya Champuru, can be found in Dan Butner's Recipes Book 2, The Blue Zone's Kitchen. 100 recipes to live to 100. He claims that he studied the diet of the blue zones, but in his version, there is no egg, fish, or pork. Actually, there is no pork in any of his Okinawan recipes, or any meat or fish in any blue zone recipe. It's basically a vegan cookbook. Hi, everybody. I want to tell you about a beautiful new book that I just got in the mail. It's by Dan Butner. So, Dan Butner became very, very famous for his Blue Zones research, but he's now published this beautiful cookbook, which is as solid and engaging as the research itself. It's got zillions of recipes in it. They're all plant-based and beautiful photographs to go along with it. So good on you, Dan. Congratulations. And you're going to love this. What? Is this a joke? Please tell me, Jake, it's not true. It is real, Mandy, I'm afraid. The creator of the Blue Zones diet didn't find it important to include pork, the star of the Okinawan cuisine, in a book about Okinawan food, because that would have ruined his whole concept of centenarians eating nothing but tofu, sweet potatoes, and colorful vegetables. Luckily, we can easily debunk that what he says is not true. So, lunch, in case you hadn't realized yet, is more vegetables, seafood, a little rice, and maybe even a little land meat like pork. One of the 100-year-olds that I met and spoke with said that she actually had a small amount of pork every day to keep healthy. So it's not just vegetables that the Okinawans eat by any means. You know what I find the most infuriating in this? There's this white guy, Dan Butner, who goes to an exotic country pretending to be a researcher and spins a fairy tale that fits his plant-based agenda and his thirst for money, and the whole world believes this fake version is how Okinawans traditionally ate. It's a serious cultural crime, and nobody's held him accountable so far. Yeah, he did the same cherry-picking with other Blue Zones, which have even more meat and dairy in their diet than Okinawans. We're talking about goat herders and shepherds, who would roll on the floor laughing if they saw what Butner put in his beautiful book. And yet, you will find zero meat in the recipes on the official website. Zero. Zilch. Nothing. Imagine that. Instead, they give you a bunch of recipes from vegan cookbooks. Basically, it's just advertisement for Butner's business associates. More than two dozen vegan recipe books are waiting the unsuspecting visitors to tell them the false tales of plant-based centenarians. And when the recipe calls for feta cheese, no problem. Here comes the fake tofu feta to the rescue sponsored by the plant-based dairy maker, Violife. There's one recipe from Dr. McDougall, a veteran plant-based guru, the author of The Healthiest Diet on the Planet. Pizza, pancakes, potatoes, pasta, seriously, the healthiest. He's also a firm believer of the nonsense that humans have no taste buds for protein and fat. Apparently, he hasn't seen our video yet where we destroyed this stupid myth. But it's never too late, Doctor, to learn at least the basics of human physiology. Another recipe is from the makers of the shameless vegan fake documentary, What the Health? And my personal favorite is from the one and only Dr. Greger, the go-to guy of basically every plant-based propaganda film. The saturated fat tripled, tripled, tripled. This is hilarious. The whole congregation is here. They really faked everything. 
People buy the books or go to that website looking for authentic recipes that fairly represent the blue zones, and they're scammed into following a 100% plant-based diet. Why does it feel like we're fighting the vegan mafia? Because we are. It's not even a conspiracy theory. It's all there and we can prove it. So let's do it. 